Hello everybody out there in YouTube world, Facebook world, social media world, the world, everybody out there who likes to watch stuff when they're bored. This is uh, another edition of Musings with MGL coming to you on the countdown to the lockdown. So as I said in a video I posted yesterday, living in Florida, the governor yesterday just issued a stay at home lockdown order that's basically, basically going to take effect tonight at midnight. So we're uh, in the home stretch of being able to wander around and, and be free and do whatever we want down here in Florida. So I'm cranking out a video tonight. It's going to kind of be uh, a little scattershot, but there's a few topics related to guns that I want to get into. And I'm a little bit frustrated because I just made this video once and it was about 20 minutes long. And then when I uh, got on the computer to upload it to YouTube, pick my thumbnail and do all that stuff, it just disappeared. So if you ever had that issue or that situation where you've worked like 20 minutes on either a video or a document or something and all of a sudden, poof, it just disappears and you're like, crap, and I got to do it all over again. So I'm going to try and do as good a job this time as I did last time because I bet you that was the best video I'd ever made. But it is what it is, you know, we're all living, living through first world problems here, I guess. So... I'm going to do a video here today. I just kind of want to touch on a bunch of different uh, firearm-related topics that are going on right now. There's a whole bunch of different things going on in the world of uh, firearms as it relates to this virus. So I kind of wanted to touch on a lot of the different topics here tonight. So it's going to be, you know, not really scattershot, but it's basically just um, musings about uh, gun topics in the apocalypse, okay? So the first thing I'll talk about is, as I stated before, oh, before we get started, see? The second takes are always the worst. Before we get started, uh, as I always say, uh, if you could click uh, subscribe if you like what I have to say. If you've been tuning in and you want to keep hearing more of it, uh, please click subscribe down in the corner there. Click the little bell, ding, ding, for the notifications. That way you get notified whenever I put up new content to give likes, uh, comments, and shares, whatever, all that stuff helps the helps the channel. I'm um, coming up on, I think, about 100, 100 subscribers, so... That's great. I appreciate it. I can't believe there's that many people out there that like to listen to, to, to what I have to say, but I appreciate it. And I hope I keep uh, pumping that number up because I'm having a lot of fun doing this. So click uh, like, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff for the YouTube channel. So uh, the first topic I want to talk about is, uh, as I stated, down here in Florida, they did just issue a stay-at-home order. So we've now joined the list of states that have uh, these kind of lockdown orders, basically where you can't go anywhere unless it's for what would be considered an essential business. Thankfully, as yours truly predicted a couple days ago, uh, Governor Santis, DeSantis put gun stuff on the essential list. So the gun shops, uh, the manufacturers, the ranges, all that stuff are included in the list of essential uh, businesses for the state. So those are going to remain open. Our governor is generally pro Second Amendment, so I knew pretty much all along that he was going to do that. What he basically did was he just wrote a, an order for the state that basically said what we consider essential is what the federal government said was essential in their guidance a few days ago. If you recall, I did a video a couple of days ago where the federal government, the Department of Homeland Security, issued a bunch of guidelines and advisories of what states should consider to be essential and not essential on that list were basically everything related to firearms. Now, a lot of people put out articles all over Facebook and social media saying, oh, look, the government, federal government declared guns essential, so now all the gun shops can stay open. And I said, nope, it's basically individual states, okay? It's not just your state. It's not the state next to you. Just because the, gov just because the federal government said that it was so doesn't mean that the states have to follow that. The states can pick and choose what they want to deem as essential or not. The advisory that they came out with even said that, that states can uh, pick, add, or detract from the list as they see fit. So the rule was basically still every state could do their own thing. So the good news is, is our governor here in Florida went ahead and followed that guidelines and made uh, all Second Amendment stuff es essential. So we're going to be able to keep uh, buying firearms, buying ammo, and going to the ranges and stuff down here locally. Now, a lot of the rangers have kind of shut down. The public ranges have been shut down by the government. So we have uh, county ranges that are run by the government. They kind of shut those down a while ago, just like they did the beaches, uh, public parks, and everything else. But the private ranges are still legally allowed to be open. Now, a lot of them have closed on purpose because they're trying to follow guidelines and keep their customers safe. And I've said this numerous times before, and I'll say it again. 
it's smart to follow these guidelines. It's smart to not expose yourself to more people than you have to. It's smart not to be in large groups. It's smart to practice sanitary procedures, washing your hands, wearing gloves if you want to or whatever. You know, that's up to people's individual choice. So I always think it's smart to do that. I advise people to do that for safety precautions. But as I've also always said, there's a difference between doing it voluntarily because it's a smart sanitary thing to do and having the government force you to do it or order you to do it. I draw the line on that. This is a free country and they shouldn't be ordering us to do anything. So as far as back to gun ranges, a lot of the private gun ranges have have voluntarily closed because, you know, it's close proximity to people. You have lots of uh, customers jammed into a small spot, especially the indoor ranges. So a lot of them have just closed voluntarily, which is fine. If that's what they want to do, it's probably a smart idea, but they are still open. So here in Florida, all the gun stuff is still open, thankfully. So if you're lucky enough to be in a state like Florida where they consider firearms to be essential, then you're good to go. You're still able to exercise your Second Amendment right as you see fit. If you're in one of the states that don't follow that, if you have the unfortunate uh, circumstance to be in like a California or somewhere where they're, they're not declared essential and a lot of them are actually going out of their way to shut them down, there's hope for you as well. Okay, So this is the second topic that I want to talk about here today. What happens if you're in one of these anti-gun, anti-Second Amendment states that are shutting everything down? So the hope for you is you know, the court system, the, the, the law. So basically, um, there's an article here on the truth about guns.com. It basically says, look, breaking news, Bay area governments, officials sued over gun store range bans by second amendment groups, individuals, and retailers today, attorneys for the second amendment foundation, California gun rights foundation, California association of federal firearms licensees, National Rifle Association of America and Firearms Policy Coalition filed a new federal lawsuit challenging bans on the operation of gun store and shooting ranges imposed by a number of Bay Area governments and government officials. A copy of the full lawsuit can be found at fpclegal.org. So they're fighting for you, okay? So if you're in one of these uh, states, California is probably the, the, the biggest one and the, the most obvious because they're doing it all up and down the state. So if you're in one of these states or if you're in one of these municipalities where they're um, shutting down gun stores, where they're claiming them not to be essential and they're shutting down basically anything related to firearms, they're you know suspending background checks, all those kind of things, these pro-Second Amendment organizations are stepping up and they're going to start filing these federal lawsuits, okay? So they're probably filed a lawsuit for injunctive relief to get an order from the courts preventing the government uh, entities from shutting these businesses down. They're going to, you know, they're filing a lawsuit. It's probably going to be heard, obviously, and then it's probably going to be appeal, and it's probably going to end up going at some point all the way up to the Supreme Court. Hopefully, they'll fast track all that stuff because obviously, if you go the normal procedure, it could take several months to get up to the Supreme Court. And by then, hopefully, this uh, virus situation will be over. And the issue will be moot. I think one of the fears that they have is that they're going to, you know, exploit it for all it's worth and continue to use this virus as an excuse to shut down these Second Amendment uh, right things like gun shops and stuff, even when they don't have to. So they want to file this lawsuit and get a ruling on it. So number one, they obviously want to prevent the governments from doing it. So they're hoping to get some sort of injunctive release uh, leaf, I would imagine, again, forcing these uh, governments to stop shutting down these businesses. But you also want to get a, a precedent. So even if uh, the virus does end earlier than they thought, and this is still going through the system, I would imagine they're going to want to still get it all the way up to the Supreme Court to get a ruling on the issue because you want to have a precedent for the next time it happens, the next calamity that falls us, whether this virus comes back next year or a new virus or I don't know, an asteroid hitting or something, who knows. Um, and the government doesn't uh, do this again. The government doesn't come out of nowhere and decide to start shutting down all these Second Amendment uh, situations, stores, etc. So they're going to want to get precedent on that. So the good news is, is if you're in one of these states, they're going to keep uh, doing these lawsuits. They're going to keep filing them and then they're going to try and get some federal rulings. And we should know here shortly what the outcomes are going to be of those. So I'll keep an eye on those things as they come up, as news hits. I'll do videos on it and keep people posted. You should try and keep yourself posted as well. Go to the gun you know, friendly websites and uh, keep your eye on things and, and keep updated on that. But they are fighting for it. So uh, that's topic number two, right? So the third topic I want to talk about tonight is um, I did a video on this before. 
as well, but I want to kind of elaborate on some uh, updated information on it, and that's this panic buying issue, okay? We all know that uh, when this virus started to hit, there was a bunch of panic buying of, of firearms. You could see lines uh, around the door from stores. There's all kinds of videos of stores saying that they're out of uh, guns and ammo. Again, there's pictures everywhere of people lined up you know, for hours trying to get into a gun shop. There's all kinds of memes <laughs> about people going in and trying to buy a gun and then getting angry that they have to wait. So we all know that there was a big surge in gun buying uh, in the month of March. Well, the uh, federal government just released the uh, FBI data on background checks for last month in March. So now we, we know exactly how high uh, the panic buy buying was. And according to the FBI data that they've uh, posted now and made public on NICS checks, it says... Uh, panic buying of firearms in response to coronavirus led to sale of over a million more firearms than are normally sold this time of year. So you're right. You heard that right. That's that's what I said. And that's what that's what their statistics say. There's all kinds of articles out there. Again, you can look it up and try and find it. But it looks like apparently there were a hundred or there were a million more firearms sold in this year's month of March than this time of year last year. So obviously last year's month of March. So there's a million uh, gun spike on that. That's a huge amount. We all knew it was coming. Everybody could see it in the Second Amendment industry. And that's good and bad. Uh, uh, I'll elaborate a little bit more in a video again I did a, a, about a week ago, I think. The good news is, is you've got more gun buyers out there. And as somebody who's pro-Second Amendment, I, I always feel that generally more guns are better especially if they're in the hands of the good guys obviously however when you have panic buying like this what you end up seeing is people who who don't own guns have never owned one and going out and buying a gun and they don't know what they're doing so you get a double-edged sword with something like that we can look at it and go oh, you know look uh, the more guns are better we can laugh at the anti-gun people and go ha ha your attempt to you know try and take away the second amendment is backfiring and they're probably all having heart attacks and coronaries with how many people are out there buying guns, especially new first-time buyers. Because they know once somebody gets a gun and starts shooting it, they usually end up being converts, and then they, they like the guns, and sometimes, lots of times, hopefully, they change their political views on the issue, and then, and then the gun grabbers lose some of their support. So that's good news. The bad news, though, is obviously you don't want people out there having guns and, and thinking they can use them or are going to use them when they don't know what they're doing. So I'm going to tell you a little bit of anecdotal story that happened to me yesterday, okay? I was at the local Walmart. I don't shop there in their Second Amendment stuff because they've obviously become very anti-Second Amendment lately with discontinuing uh, handgun ammunition and uh, assault weapon uh, sales, et cetera, et cetera. And they only basically sell hunting rifles and twenty twos at this particular point, shotguns. So I, I tend to not, I don't buy, I'm not 10, I don't buy. But I still shop there for, you know, candy and toilet paper and all that kind of stuff if you can find any so I was at Walmart and I was walking in the sporting goods section and I hear this conversation going on between the idiot who's working behind the counter and this woman about firearms okay and I'm not going to get into the specifics about what their topic was because it has to do with Florida law and and some things about when can you carry a gun and when do you need a permit etc cetera, etc cetera. so I'm hoping that some people on this channel are not in Florida, so I don't want to get bogged down in the Florida rules. But basically, I was listening to this guy explain to her about the law when it comes to handguns in Florida, and everything he was telling her was wrong. All right, He was just, he was wrong. He didn't know the law, and he was misadvising her. So I heard this, and I stepped in. I just walked up and said, yeah, everything you're saying is completely wrong. I proceeded to introduce myself and tell her I was a gun lawyer, and I'm a pro-Second Amendment lawyer, and I explained to her what the law was, and I gave her my business card and said, when you ever have legal questions, check with a lawyer, don't check with the person behind the Walmart counter, okay? So that was issue number one with that encounter, was the guy behind the counter misadvising the woman about firearm laws. That happens all the time. I've actually been in gun shops locally where I live and heard people working at actual gun shops, not just Walmart, but actual gun shops, giving the wrong legal advice um, to customers. They know everything there is about the guns, how they work, et cetera, et cetera, but they don't know everything that they think they know about the law. So I've heard them misadvise people before. So that wasn't anything new. It just annoys me whenever I hear it and I always feel the need to intervene. 
So I intervened there. But the other issue with this encounter was this woman, okay? This woman was a lady, probably in her mid-40s. She had a, a child with her. I'm going to assume it was her daughter, but it was like a 10-year-old child, a little girl that was with her. The woman had a mask on. The child had a mask on. The woman was wearing gloves. She has a little pad and pen that she's going down taking notes on. So she's one of these people, okay? So she's obviously freaking out about what's going on on the virus. And she had come to Walmart to buy a shotgun, okay? It was clear based on her, her lack of knowledge about the law and the question she was asking the guy behind the counter that she had never had a gun before in her life. She'd never owned one. She never fired one. And she tells me, I came here to buy a shotgun, but my brother told me, he wasn't there, like on the phone, through text messages. <clears throat> That's not corona, that was just a, a throat. So she says, her brother said, oh, you shouldn't buy a shotgun, you should buy something like a 9 millimeter because it's better. This woman is at the store trying to buy a shotgun, okay? So she's never owned one before. She obviously doesn't know how to use one. She's got a, a minor child who I'm going to assume probably lives with her. And uh, she just decided to go to Walmart to buy a shotgun because, and this is what she said, all the craziness out there, okay? That, to me, is just as, if not more, scary than the guy behind the counter misadvising her about the law. So, so picture this situation. You have a, a customer who's doesn't know anything about firearms, has never owned one, never shotgun does, or shot one, doesn't know anything about them, having a conversation with a guy at Walmart selling firearms who doesn't know the law. And he's advising her on what the law is, and she's trying to buy a gun without knowing how they work. I can't imagine a more scarier situation uh, for the gun <laughs> community than something like that, because that's the type of person who goes out there and does something stupid with their gun because she doesn't know how to use it. She's not going to know how to store it. I mean, she has a child, so normally you would store it in a safe place. I guarantee you, she obviously doesn't have a gun safe because she clearly doesn't own any guns. She doesn't know how to, she's not going to know how to properly load them, how to store the ammunition. She's not going to know any of that stuff. And here she is at Walmart trying to buy a gun just because she's scared about what's going on. And look, I can appreciate her wanting to protect herself and her family, who she obviously has, but that whole combination of that that conversation that I witnessed firsthand myself is extremely scary and extremely frightening okay so my advice is if you hear something like that and you know what you're talking about you got to intervene and you got to help people out so in addition to telling him he was wrong I also told her not to buy a gun from Walmart I gave her the name of a local gun shop and I gave her a specific name of the guy who owns it and I said you need to go to this gun shop and you need to ask for this guy and he will help you find a gun that is right for you and while you're there tell him you need to take a class make sure you tell him you've never owned a gun before and don't know what you're doing and that you need to take a class because like most gun shops now in the country uh, all our local shops here teach classes and they're still having those I've seen a few uh, local people uh, do them with spaced out people. You can still kind of do some things online. So I told her, I said, you need to take a class, but go see this guy at this store and they'll take care of you. Don't buy it from here at Walmart. Okay. So you're going to have to intervene with people like that. If you're out in public and you hear it, intervene with it. The other issue is intervene with your friends. In other words, you're probably going to get, I've already had it happen myself and I know of several other gun owners who have had it happen. You know, your one buddy or your one a relative who doesn't own a firearm, doesn't know anything about them, but they know that you do. And so they text you or call you up and say, hey, man, while this is going on, can I have one of your guns? Can I just borrow one of your guns and, you know, keep it in my house to protect my own family? Look, you got to tell those people no, unless they're willing to take some time to learn how to do it. OK, I did have a friend that was like that. It's a local uh, person I know. She's kind of a single mom, has some kids and wanted to learn just in case. So I made her come over to my house. We watched a bunch of videos on how guns work. I took out uh, my unloaded, obviously safe guns and showed her how they operate. We took them apart. I gave her basically an, an in-class tutorial on it. And then I took her to a range. A friend who owns a bunch of property here has a range. I took her there and we taught her how to shoot in a safe environment, taught her all the rules and she learned how to work a firearm and guess what I still didn't give her one she still doesn't have one and she, to her credit she said she wasn't ready yet to have one but she's ready to, to move the next step to, to get to one so 
you need to look for those type of people and help those people out. If they just want to say, hey, man, give me a gun, you tell them no, you can't have a gun. If they're willing to learn and let you kind of teach them and ease them into it and be patient to not need a gun today because they think the apocalypse is coming, but to wait a couple of days or a week or so to get some more training in before they then go out and buy a gun, I'm all for that. That's what you need to do. So we and the Second Amendment uh, community need to keep an eye out for people like that who are wanting our help and we need to offer it to them. And if people don't want our help, we need to be bluntly honest with them and say, look, you, you, you can't have a gun and you shouldn't, go, you shouldn't go buy one, okay? So keep an eye on those type of issues. You need to help those people out and we need to stick together as a Second communi Amendment community. And then that person, when this is all over, may become a convert and they'll become to our side and then uh, the world will be a better place. But just scary people walking into a store wanting to buy a shotgun just because they're scared without knowing a damn thing about it is... is ridiculously scary and something that I'm uh, not for. And I would imagine most of you wouldn't be as well. So uh, that's basically going to be it for today. Those are the three topics I wanted to hit at. Like I said, today was kind of just a hodgepodge of things that were going out there. Instead of doing quick little seven minute videos, I figured I'd just do one long one and hit some topics. So the good news is, is, you know, in Florida, here it is almost nine o'clock. So nine, 10, 11, 12, that's three hours. I suck at math. That's why I went to law school. So we're going to be on lockdown in about three hours. Uh, but we can still have guns. So that's good. If you're in a state that, state that doesn't like guns, hang out and wait for these rulings to come out, okay? Everybody needs to support these organizations. I know that sometimes people get frustrated with some of the administration or the people who run these organizations. They don't want to give them their money. I get that. But this is what we need them for in times like this because you and I individually wouldn't be able to, to, to front the money for one of these massive lawsuits that you'd have to do. So you need these large organizations so support them so hang in there if you're in one of these anti-gun states because hopefully uh, help is coming soon uh, through the court system um, gun sales you know are, are panicking through the roof I actually suspect April is going to be even higher than March was because things have obviously ratcheted up you have a lot more states going on lockdown you have a lot of news conferences every day where they're talking about the death rates going through the roof and more people getting it you're seeing some food shortages in some places where people are waiting in line hours at at food banks to get food the government checks haven't started rolling yet so you're going to have some weird desperate stuff going on out there you're going to have some mentally uh incapacitated style people with getting depressions and not maybe not being able to get their medications so I, I think people are actually going to buy more guns in April than they did in March. So I suspect this panic buying is going to keep going. So we as Second Amendment uh, people need to keep an eye on that. We need to help out our local communities and our friends whenever we can and educate people to stay safe. But obviously, number one is keep yourself safe. Okay. So on that note, I'll go ahead and sign out for tonight. Thank you for joining another episode of Musings with MGL on kind of a scattershot uh, night about guns. So as I always like to say, look, keep yourself safe, keep yourself healthy, keep yourself open if you're allowed by your government overlords, and as always, okay, carry on. Have a good night, everybody.